Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to my newest Hans of 4 video. Did you ever wonder what would happen if everything was mountains? Well, wonder no longer. I have changed all the terrain in the entire world into mountains. I have made my own mod that does it and now we're going to load into an observer game and see how everything turns out. But first let me show you the mod. The mod we're using is called Torior's Terrain Mod, because I made it and it's a terrain mod. Actually, I meant several. This one is Torior's Terrain Mod. Mountains. It is not on the workshop yet, it will be within a week. For now, I've made them work locally. I still need to finish up the other ones, because this is a whole series of mods, and upload them to the workshop. And I will drop a link in the description as soon as it is uploaded. So, what did I do in this little mod? I actually tried changing the graphics and made the whole map also look like mountains, but it was actually very, very ugly, so I decided not to do it in the end and just leave the map looking as it is looking. What I did modify was the core gameplay element. So how the game behaves. Let's have a look at a typical mountain province of Tyrol. Unit effects, attack 40%, division attrition 40%, enemy air support minus 10% and movement speed doubled. Uh, the local province effects is not our problem. So with that, this is what mountains do. And of course different terrains have different effects, for example a jungle mm, gives very high attrition. And plains is a very nice place where you don't have any trouble whatsoever. Or is it? If we look at this place, which is the plains, see it's still called plains, it still has the picture of plains, it still looks like plains, but it is actually mountains. If you look at the unit effects, they are exactly the same as they would be in a mountain. I modified all this terrain to behave like mountains. I'm probably going to get quite a lot of use of that mod, I'm gonna be playing as different countries in this situation and see how that changes. But before we do that I wanna have a good look at what this mod does in a controlled setting, but oh, I started in 1936, I wanted to start in 1939, let me redo that. Yeah, same game, um, we're starting as Cuba, we'll be just spectating, but in 1939. Why? Well, because I want a controlled environment to test the impact of the mod, and if we start in 1936, the war in China can go very differently, and so can the war in Spain, so we won't have that controlled environment. Again, this is the same mod, everything is mountains, even if it's not called mountains. Let's disable the fog of war so we can have a good look. It is 1939 in historical focuses, so Germany is obviously about to attack. But how will everything play out when all this land is mountains? First I'm going to tell you what I expect to happen and then we'll see what actually happens. Mountains are very good um, for defense, so I'm actually expecting Germany to have quite a lot of trouble. They will probably beat Poland, they'll probably beat the Benelux in France, but then when they start going to the Soviet Union I am expecting them to be in quite a lot of trouble. I might be wrong. Let's see. Unpausing. Let's go to speed 5 and see what happens. And once we're done trying this historical scenario, I'm also going to run another one on the Battle Royale mod I presented last time. And Germany is attacking Poland. Actually, let's go to the Observer mode so I can show you that this mod is actually taking effect. Type the Observe command. Or Spectator, they both work the same. And now we will switch to uh, Germany. This is a Plains province. They're attacking into Plains. Let's have a look. Oh, I switched to Poland, <laughs> sorry. Let's have a look at this battle. As you can see, terrain is reducing their attack by 60%. Because it's mountains. As you can now see, the mod is working properly. Oh, yeah, I should get out of observing as Germany. Too much stuff happening. Let's go back to Cuba. As you can see, the German attack is progressing, although it is not progressing as quickly as it normally would. Because mountains are very good for defense. Still, that is not enough to stop the Germans. I wonder how well they will do in a mod variant I've prepared, in which everything is volcanoes and lava and all that. You'll see soon. Hmm, they've gone through the Marginal Line, but it is not helping them much because it's still... Oh, mountains. I am expecting Poland to fall, but they're actually defending quite nicely. Wait a minute, is this Romania invading Poland? Yes, it is. So the preliminary conclusion is, this is good for defense. Whoever is attacking is gonna have a bad time. It's December 1939, Poland, the Benelux and France are all 
quite well. I should probably talk a bit about the mod. It is very simple and very lightweight. It should work with pretty much everything that does not modify the terrain in the game. So you can probably run it in all those total conversion mods if they don't modify the terrain. You can play an All Mountains Kaiserreich game if you want. I don't think Kaiserreich modifies the terrain. I might be wrong on that. I wonder if the Soviets will attack Poland because this is taking so long. This Blitzkrieg is not very blit. So you can attack Finland again. Yeah, Blitzkrieg is just not working if you're going over mountains, is it? And in such a scenario, the attacker always loses more equipment and manpower. So let's have a quick look at Germany and see how much they've lost. 300,000 troops. Well, it's not that much, but they've lost more than Poland. Okay, Italy is going through southern France. France just doesn't have enough troops here to defend from this attack. So that will be the end of France. Let's switch to France. Yeah, this isn't looking good. They just don't have enough troops. They focused on defending the Benelux instead of defending their own borders. Poland, on the other hand, is still standing. Good job. Quite possibly, Poland will hold out longer than France. Ah, the Soviet Union is justifying war on Poland because this is taking so long. So we're going to have a war between the Allies and the Soviet Union and the Allies and the Axis. If the Axis and the Soviet Union don't go to war with each other, uh, this might change quite a lot. Yugoslavia is attacking Bulgaria. The Benelux still stands in May 1940. Ah, Warsaw has fallen. And, yeah, I am spectating against Poland. This is why we're seeing all that, but the Soviet Union declared war, which is the end. However, the end came much, much later than it normally does, didn't it? I wonder if the Germans and the Soviets will go to war with each other, because um, they're both at war with the Allies, so they're both busy. June 1940, the Benelux stands. Let's have a look at the German losses. Almost a million manpower. So who's fighting who? Okay, Yugoslavia joined Allies, Bulgaria joined Axis, and we have the independent state of Croatia going on here. Um, yeah, this was to be expected. The mountains didn't change much in this situation. But they are changing quite a lot here, really. And I wonder what happens in Scandinavia. Actually, Italy taking over most of France is quite important, because usually Germany does much better when that happens. When Italy is taking care of France, Germany usually does better in the war. Let's have another look at Germany. A lot of manpower, but how's your logistics? Yeah, you're missing quite a lot of equipment because of all the losses you've taken. Yeah, that's not something you would expect, right? The Netherlands and Belgium defending successfully for quite a long time. If the Netherlands don't capitulate, the Allied counterattack will be much easier to execute. Then again, any counterattack counts as an attack into the mountains. And we know from EU4 that that's a horrible idea, usually. Is that a US volunteer force? Yes, it is. I wonder if they can take Copenhagen in that situation. It seems very well defended. Come on, Germany. Attack the Soviet Union and be destroyed. I have to increase the cooling on my computer, otherwise it might fry. So, I might be a bit of noise from now on. How's the war in China going? I think Japan will still be successful because they have... Uh, they are quite superior militarily. But they certainly do have a hard time doing that. Hmm... And Communist China is doing quite well. I think they might actually lose. Yeah, I, I'm changing my prediction. I think Japan will lose in China. Well, the German attacks in the Netherlands and Denmark are rather pathetic in this situation, aren't they? Italy did good in France, though. How much manpower did Germany lose? One and a half million already. They still have not taken over the Benelux countries. Well, this is going to be a short World War II, isn't it? Although Denmark might be defeated in a moment. I'm very proud of Poland and their valiant resistance, but, you know, the Soviet attack uh, changed things quite dramatically. Denmark has capitulated, but the German manpower is declining surprisingly quickly. I suppose they are doing aggressive attacks into the mountains, which usually does that to manpower, but this is even faster than I expected. Let's zoom in on one of those battles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 16 soft attack against 897 defense. The Netherlands and Belgium are going to survive this, I think. And Germany is going to attack until they can attack no more. 2.27 million losses on the Axis side, 134 on the Allied side only. 1941. Belgium and the Netherlands still stand. 
I guess Belgian lives do matter in this war. <laughs> the Germans have stopped attacking. They don't have enough equipment. This is interesting and quite hilarious, actually. Here you have it. If there were mountains in the Netherlands, history would have gone quite differently. Two million German manpower lost already. What is your conscription law? Extensive conscription. Oh, you're still mobilizing. And total mobilization is only 2% eligible core population. They still can mobilize quite a lot more. The Soviet Union is cancelling the non-aggression pact and I don't blame them because the German forces are going to be a joke compared to the Soviet might. Good job, allies. The valiant defense of the Brussels mountains is working and the Dutch troops in Mount Amsterdam are doing quite well. Actually, the allies are probing for counterattack and Germany is about to be out of manpower. They're going to need to switch their manpower loss very soon, otherwise they'll just get defeated. And they don't have enough political power to do that. Yet. How's your attack on Norway? As expected, it isn't. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, uh, right, the Soviet Union is at war with the Allies as well, which means they are taking Norway, and the Soviet Union can handle that without too much trouble. That's a pity. Norway is going to fall. Germany has zero manpower and Belgium has actually retaken territory. I think I'm going to do everything as jungle next and see that attrition in action. Alright, have you changed your manpower? <laughs> okay, so Germany seems to have spent its political power on addressing the strike crisis instead of boosting its manpower, which seems like the most, most pressing issue at the moment. Um, but I suppose we'll see how the situation develops. One thing is certain though, it's not gonna develop well for Germany. Losses. Almost 3 million Germans. And only one and a half million of all the Allies. The Belgians are pushing quite effectively, apparently. The Allied counteroffensive in France and the Benelux is progressing nicely. France is actually retaking its territory, and Luxembourg has been recovered. Germany finally went to service by requirement, but they are way off reinforcing all their troops. It's gonna take them a while to get that mobilization and they're losing forces all the time as well. Also, Norway is taken over by the Red Menace. I didn't even notice when they beat up Finland. Hmm. Oh, Mount Brussels has been taken. Germany has mobilized 3.4%. Uh, they had two last time we checked and they're still out of manpower because all the ones that are sent to the front lines are immediately killed, apparently. Operation Tannenbaum. Ah, do I remember correctly? Tannenbaum, I think that's Christmas tree. Anyway, um, yeah, Operation Tannenbaum means they're gonna be attacking Switzerland, um, but that's not gonna be a problem because it, of course, was already mountains, so the mod is not going to change anything. Yeah, Germany has gotten into the vicious circle when you don't have any manpower, uh, and you can't get any more manpower because if you get any manpower, it immediately gets uh, destroyed. Oh, they went to all adults serve, really? I suppose that makes sense, but uh, they still haven't mobilized everyone, so it makes sense later. It really looks like the Netherlands and Belgium will never fall. Oh right, I forgot about that. Inclusion of Spain in the Axis might help them quite a bit. Spain has a very good AI for aggressive attacks, and it also is quite powerful. In other news, Greece has joined the battle. The Netherlands are actually invading Germany now, and the United States are working on attacking Germany. Yeah, right, a lot of stuff has happened. The United States have joined, and I think Spain has as well. This is completely undefended here, and the Americans are coming to help, although it is going to take them a while to arrive. But there is a bloody lot of them. Let's have a look at the casualties. The Germans have lost 3.5 million, Italy has lost 1.5 million. The Allies altogether have lost 2.3. Apparently these American forces are not very good at geography. I have no idea why the United States are landing all their troops in Greenland. The Soviet Union is getting ready to attack Japan, and Japan and Germany have guaranteed each other's independence. So if the Soviet Union attacks Japan and that puts them at war with Germany, 
Well, then that's the end of Germany. And even because they're just justifying, Germany is now retreating a lot of their forces to the Soviet border to prepare for that. And that means, well, that means the Allies are gonna have a much easier time here, aren't they? Uh, Germany has recovered from the manpower situation, um, but the damage has already been done. They were unable to completely take over the Benelux. And thus, well, this is certainly a thorn in their side, and a rather big one. Uh, see, another promise is about to be taken um, by the Allies here. Oh! Italian Union, really? How did that happen? Does this happen normally? I did turn on historical focuses, so I'm not sure why the Italian Union thing happened. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Italian Union is the green one. Oh, that is huge. The Allies have just taken back France as Italian Union. Yeah, the war with the Soviet Union seems to not be necessary at all. Although I haven't seen this uh, civil war thing happen in Italy before in my historical games, and this is on historical focuses. Then again, by 1943 I usually have them annexed, so I suppose that can happen. Then again, even if it didn't, the Allies were already making progress here. Hmm, Italian Union has capitulated. However, France did regain all the territory. Curious. The Italian Union capitulated, however, it is still alive down in Spain, and it seems like nationalist Spain is having quite a lot of trouble, and the Allies are getting Switzerland back. And that is it for Spain. Some naval invasions from various parties in Italy. That might be the end of it, if those are well executed, because there's not much defense. Once Italy is taken care of, well, that should accelerate the German demise. It is a bit disappointing that there is no conflict between the Soviet Union and uh, Germany. Um, but if you guys would just step into Genoa, which is undefended, everything has slowed down quite a bit. Well, mostly because the Soviets are not getting involved, but uh, I suppose the most important observation is that the Germans were never able to beat the Netherlands and Belgium. In the meantime, China is almost done beating up Japan. They're pushing them out quite aggressively. The game has slowed down quite a lot, and for the last year there hasn't really been a change in the front lines. So I'm going to, you know, assess the situation, make my predictions, and end it here. Because we have a situation in which Germany and the Soviet Union will never go to war with each other. I experienced a similar situation when I was playing Czechoslovakia. Essentially, when they're both at war with the Allies, they're not willing to engage one another. In this situation, this game will be quite slow and it will go on for a long time. Who will win? Well, eventually the Allies will be able to capitulate Italy, which, because they're, they're very close to it, and um, one or two lucky uh, breaks, lucky battles and pushes should put them over the edge and actually lead to the capitulation of Italy. And this is slowly, slowly progressing. At that point, they'll be able to focus completely on Germany, and eventually, after a long time, they will beat Germany, because the Allies have much much greater strength, much greater potential than the Axis at the moment. Just compare these statistics. The Allies have over twice the factories the Axis have, and they also have more troops. And there's way more of them, with more total manpower. So in the end, eventually, after quite a long time, um, the Axis will be defeated. While I was recording that, actually the big break in Italy came, and yeah, I think there was a capitulation, but I wasn't paying attention at the moment, because I thought we were ending it. So as what I was predicting is already happening, let's uh, give it a little bit more time, so I can feel good about being right. The tables have flipped a bit, because now the eyes are the aggressor, uh, which means they get all the negative modifiers of fighting in the mountains. However, they did manage to beat up Italy. The tables have turned a little bit, because now the Allies are the attackers in all of these battles, almost all of these battles, which means they are suffering very harsh consequences of uh, attacking into the mountains, everywhere. Still, they did manage to take out Italy, so now it is only a matter of time until Germany finally succumbs. Uh, they'll connect uh, their front lines here, which will greatly enhance uh, the Allied capabilities, 
and then converge on Germany. Again, this is gonna take a while, um, but eventually after some time and few nukes from uh, the Americans, Germany will be defeated. After that is done, their ideologies will be changed and they will be joining the Allies, which are at war with the Soviet Union. Which means the Soviet Union will be at war not only with Britain, France, uh, the United States, the rest of the Allies, but also with Germany and Italy. Which essentially means the Allies are gonna beat the Soviet Union. Tiny modification with a huge impact. Although it is a pity that the Soviet Union and Germany never fought. But that is uh, the result of Poland defending for so long. Anyway, I'm going to end this here because my computer is overheating and the game is running slowly. I think we all can pretty much see where this is going. China is gonna push Japan out of uh, the continent. Uh, Japan is gonna be marginalized, eventually the Allies will beat it too, maybe even the Soviets will join. And that's how this is all going to play out. Let's end this scenario and now combine my mountain mod with the battle royale mod and see how that influences the world. Now we're going to run another test scenario, also mountains everywhere, this time with the battle royale mod. Let's uh, go spectating as uh, Cuba turn off historical focuses initiate battle royale if you're curious about uh, the mod i have made a separate video exploring it and seeing how everything behaves in you know without my modification added to it let's disable fog of war and let's go into spectator mode just to remind everyone with the battle royale activated every country is attacking their weakest neighbor and they can only annex people until there's only one left let's see how that works out when everything is mountains in one day the mod is going to activate which means all puppets are released all wars are ended and everyone starts attacking everyone all right see this is it happening Everyone's attacking everyone. I've disabled all the war declaration um, notifications. We will only have the peace deal notifications. So first one, Germany annexes Luxembourg. Who's next for you? Slovakia. Yeah, see? The puppets were released immediately, so Germany is now attacking its former puppets. There's going to be a lot of quick eliminations here. Italy going after Switzerland. Slovakia being taken over. Now who's next? Denmark, probably. Yes, Germany is going after Denmark, Poland is going after Latvia, everyone in the Balkans fighting each other. Mm. Oh, Romania is going after Bulgaria, but Yugoslavia is going after Greece instead. Right, and the Soviet Union attacking small targets to the south. Japan is going to have a very hard time against China. Yeah, El Salvador usually takes the dominant position down here, and Argentina usually gets the dominant position down here. France going after the Benelux, and Spain going after Portugal. Italy is beating up Yugoslavia effortlessly. Wait a minute, what happened here? Poland is not at war with Germany. Did they do... Did they do Danzig for Slovakia? Did they do Danzig or war, and, and did Poland accept? That is actually quite possible. Which is strange, also seems like the same thing might have gone for the Soviet Union attacking Poland. Did you agree to their demands? Well, that is strange. Anyway, Sweden is taken care of. Now we'll get Germany going after Norway and Finland. Portugal proving quite difficult to annex. And France going after Spain. Norway is annexed. I suppose Germany will now be going after Finland, yes. In the meantime, France, Spain and Portugal are all going to be France. Greece and Bulgaria are taken care of, so now Hungary becomes the target and... Oh, interesting. I thought Romania would be stronger than Turkey at the moment, um, but actually Italy is going after Romania. Portugal is next, which means France is already in dangerous... Oh, they attacked the United Kingdom. Well, that is disappointing, because that means they're going to do absolutely nothing for the next few years of the game. They are just going to try and get a naval invasion on the United Kingdom, and they will fail. How's America? Central American Empire doing surprisingly well. Germany is going after Poland, well that was to be expected, and Soviet Union 
is attacking Jibaye Sun Ma. I suppose everything will be determined by who Germany goes after next. Okay, they're going after France. Germany's going after France. Essentially, not much of a difference with the stuff happening in Europe. The differences in strength between two fighting countries here are usually big enough for the old mountains thing to be partially irrelevant. However, in Central America, we have the Central American Empire, which is uh, essentially El Salvador, I believe. Um, we have the Central American Empire successfully preventing the United States from moving south. Quite a feat, actually. France was the next... That, that was quick. Oh, right, they still had the negative modifiers. Right. And Germany has attacked... Oh, that's disappointing. Germany's attacked the United Kingdom. In the meantime, Peru and Argentina are growing. Actually, Peru is doing better than it usually is. That should be the end of Iran soon. Who's Italy fighting? Uh, Yemen and Iran. Yemen actually took over Saudi Arabia. Now, the situation in Europe is relatively predictable. Actually, with the changes the mod made, I'm more interested in what's going on in South America. Because while this seems almost unthinkable, the United States can't beat El Salvador. I mean, the United States are powerful, they have a lot of manpower, a lot of factories. They will eventually beat them, but it could take years just basing on this defense here. Oh, actually, the attack on Britain came much sooner than I expected. The German AI did quite a good job. I didn't think they were going to have a navy capable of doing that. Uh, however, it is possible that the French attack on the United Kingdom ruined the British navy. Because the French also had quite a powerful one. So they could have fought the British Navy and uh, destroyed it sufficiently for the Germans to land a naval invasion. Uh, unfortunately, the Germans only have two units in Britain. Will that be sufficient to... Oh, sorry, three units. Will that be sufficient to beat the Brits? Seeing how many units the British have, it actually might be. Yeah, I think we'll have the annexation of Britain in 1941. Peru is fighting Brazil and so is Argentina. By the United Kingdom... United Kingdom is fighting Germany and Italy, both. Oh, well that might explain that naval invasion. Speaking of which, Germany, with, what, three units, has taken over the United Kingdom, almost all of it. Argentina and Peru are ganging up on Brazil, which of course means Brazil would be next. Uh, however, the outcome of the war between Peru and Argentina will be crucial, and because whoever wins that can actually dominate all of South America. Normally, uh, the North Americans, the United States, would be here by then, and they would eventually grind South America down and win. However, with the Central American Empire defending so well, we might have a separation with a separate state in North America, separate state in Central America, and separate state dominating South America, which would be quite interesting. Also, we're about to see the downfall of Britain, apparently. Three German units was all it took. Oh, right, I forgot. When they take someone over, it immediately becomes core, so the Germans will need to take more than that. Uh, however, Italy is already taking a lot of their victory points down in Africa, so this I suppose this is just a matter of time. For some reason, they're just sitting here when they could be retaking their territory. Yeah, British land AI isn't very good. Their naval AI can be useful, but their land AI is not that great. Hmm, China actually did quite well here. Can you believe this? Not a single province lost. This is marvelous. And all that because of a few mountains over here. Seems like uh, the United States might be breaking through soon. But even if they do, that will give enough time to either Argentina or Peru to dominate all of South America, most probably. United Kingdom was annexed, and Germany immediately attacked Italy. Yeah, Germany is just so much stronger right now. 735 factories against 300 factories. Manpower is similar, but, you know... Germany not only has a lot more factories, it also has some nice military buffs, so yeah, Italy will be surrendering soon. Well, the defense of the Central American Empire, also known as El Salvador, has finally been broken, but I do applaud their efforts, this was really impressive. Italy is a powerful country, but um, yeah, they're not gonna stand against Germany. And neither is anyone else, apparently. Central American Empire was the next. Uh, well, that makes me a bit sad, because they were fighting 
very well. Now, United States, who are you attacking? Canada. Peru and Argentina are finally fighting each other. I think Argentina might win, but I'm kind of rooting for Peru because in the test scenarios for the mod, Argentina was usually the dominant power in South America. And that is the end of China. Who are you fighting? South Africa. Canada was the next. How about Japan? Japan is fighting the Dutch East Indies. Actually, Italy taking over Turkey and all the other countries here might be beneficial to Germany. Why? Well, because it is especially difficult to get across the Strait to Messina. And once all these are cores as well, well, you won't need to. You just need to only take a lot of victory points elsewhere. Argentina seems to be slowly gaining the upper hand on Peru, um, but that is actually not certain. Italy was in next. All right, who took what? Germany took most of it. And they're now attacking South Africa. Also, the Soviet Union and Japan are finally fighting each other. Uh, the Soviet Union is more powerful um, theoretically, but Japan, having annexed China and gotten it cored automatically, also has infinite manpower. So even though the Soviets are most probably quite superior, uh, this can go on forever. South Africa is in the next, they're right. Let's see who Germany goes after. They have gone after the Soviet Union, which means the end of the Soviet Union. They do have infinite manpower, but Germany has infinite factories. Well, not really, of course, but um, after a certain point, manpower no longer matters. If you have 10 million in the bank, let's say, you might as well have infinite manpower, almost, unless you just, you know, attack everyone on aggressive with weak units without equipment. Germany having over three times as many factories as the Soviet Union should not have too much trouble beating them up. Even though in the everything is mountains scenario, the attacker has a harder time in all their battles, the Soviet Union is fighting Germany and Japan at the same time. All right, at this point, it is pretty clear what is going to happen. First, let's comment on the terrain mod in this scenario. The most important thing that it actually, you know, made a difference in was the Central American Empire, also known as El Salvador, which, thanks to the mountains over here, was able to resist the Americans for years. Also, Peru turned out to be in a better situation. Uh, usually they would be an next by now and Argentina would be uh, dominating South America and now they have a pretty evenly matched fight. Well, this is, this is actually the main difference. There wasn't that much of a distinction um, to what happened everywhere else. Now, what's gonna happen next? Peru and Argentina are going to fight each other. One of them is eventually going to prevail, but in a severely weakened state. In the meantime, the Americans are going to focus on invading Haiti and fail miserably for a long time. Germany is going to defeat the Soviet Union in a year or two, and they're gonna take most of the land while Japan takes a bit here. Afterwards, Germany will find Japan and eventually beat them up. In the meantime, the United States might have already invaded Haiti and moved down to South America, facing a unified South America under Peru or Argentina. Now, the United States have already attacked Peru, so it is most likely that Argentina will actually prevail if Peru gets uh, a naval invasion landed, for example, which is possible. In that situation, we will have a dominant Argentina fighting the United States for years to come, while Germany consolidates all of Europe, Asia and Africa under its rule eventually. Then we will have Germany, that is pretty much unstoppable, and the United States, which is strong but not nearly as strong as Germany. And probably by that point the game will end, because it will take a very long time for them to try and invade the United States. Yeah, the invasion of the Soviet Union is actually going quite well for Germany. Long story short, the mod didn't make that much of a difference in the Battle Royale mod, apart from South and Central America. Uh, having seen the Battle Royale mod play out a couple of times already, this was actually the only interesting area to me. Well, that and the invasion of Britain with three units, that was actually successful. All right, I'm going to end it here. Let me know how you like the mod and how you like the scenarios. I'm going to be making a couple more of those videos because I've made a whole series of mods. Seems like Peru might actually be winning because the US is not landing any naval invasions. If Peru manages to beat up Argentina before the United States land, uh, well, good for Peru. We are going to be ending it here, but I am curious 
to read what you think about this, what you think about the testing scenarios for the mods and the mod itself. And if you'd like to play it, I will be putting it up on the Steam Workshop soon. So check the description if there's a link, uh, that means the mod is available. I think I might do everything as jungle next or planes for no terrain obstructions, or everything is a lava, which is one of the modifications I've also made. Anyway, let's end the video here and make sure to let me know what you think in the comments. I will see you soon, hopefully very soon. Oh, one more thing before we go. I am not abandoning my challenges. I'm going to be making another one for the upcoming weekend. Uh, but, um, you know, I want to play around with the mods that I've made, at least a little bit. So before that happens, I think there'll be another video about mods uh, this week. Thank you for watching and goodbye.